Okay, so in the last two videos, we built and deployed our first AppRite functions, and we did this using the starter templates that AppRite has prepared for us, and that's all great. In fact, it's recommended to do things that way, but in this video, I wanna try something a little bit different and build these functions out completely from scratch. So that means we're coding out every single step in this process, and then when it comes time to deploy, we're gonna go into our console, go through the entire configuration process. And this is really gonna give us a good understanding of how everything works. So you don't have to do this, but I would highly recommend following along with this video. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's go ahead and jump right in and start coding. Now, the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and create a configuration file with Node. This is gonna be a package.json file, and that's where we'll have all of our dependencies here. So let's go ahead and run npm init. So make sure you have Node.js installed. And we'll just go through the default settings here. We'll just hit enter until it creates that file for us. Here we have package.json. And I'm just gonna change this to main.js for my entry point. And we're gonna set the type to module. So the way that we're handling imports, we wanna make sure this is set to module. Otherwise, we're gonna get errors later. Okay, so now we can actually create the actual function. So this is gonna be main.js and for the function, let's go ahead and just build this out. If you watched the last videos, you should be familiar with this. We'll just do export default, and we're gonna make this an async function. Here, we're gonna deconstruct the context object. So we're gonna take in the request, the response, log, and error. Just go ahead and deconstruct that object. And then for the response here, let's just go ahead and finish this up. We'll just do return res.send, and we're just gonna send back hello world, like that. Okay, so the next step in this process is just to go ahead and create a new GitHub repo. So we're not letting AppRite do any of this automatically. We're just gonna create a new repo. We're gonna call this my underscore functions, and we won't set any description. Let's just set it to private so nobody else sees this. Create a new GitHub repo. We'll go ahead and connect it and deploy it. And then the next step will be to actually go into AppRite and configure it. So. Let's go ahead and run git init. And then we'll do git status just to make sure, git add. We'll do git commit. And then we'll just do first commit. And then let's just go ahead and connect it to this actual repo. So we'll just create a main branch and then we'll add this specific remote right here. So we'll do git main and then we'll just copy this right here. So make sure you're copying yours, not mine. And we'll set the remote and then we can do git push dash u origin main. Okay, so very easy. We created a simple function, package.json file. We pushed our code. Let's make sure it's here. So here's our first function. So from here, we can go into our console and actually create the function and connect it to our GitHub repo. So we'll go into functions, and these are the two functions we created in the last videos. We'll go ahead and just create a new function here. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and connect to your GitHub account. I've already done that. So here's my account, and this is the repo I just created. So we're just gonna go ahead and connect it to that repo, and we're gonna set some configuration. So we're gonna point to the main branch, that's all good. The function is gonna sit in the root directory, so we're not specifically putting this into any folder. So it's gonna sit in the root directory, I can leave that empty right there. We'll hit next. For the function name, I'm just gonna call this node function just to identify this, because we're gonna create this function again with Python and other runtimes, so we can go ahead and just give it a name like that, whatever you wanna name it, that's up to you. For the runtime itself, we'll leave this as node 18, and the entry point is gonna to point to main.js. That's where our function sits. And for the build commands, I wanna go ahead and just make sure we install all of the dependencies in package.json. So we're just gonna do npm install, and we can click next here. For the execute permissions here, we're just gonna go ahead and set this to any. We'll hit create here. Essentially, that's just making sure that anybody can execute this function and we'll talk about security and other permissions later on. So this is my function and right now it's building. We're just gonna go ahead and wait for that to build and we'll test it out and see if everything works. So this is the domain for it. We'll go ahead and open this up. And what we should see is this response that says, hello world. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And here we go, we've built our first function completely from scratch. So next what we're gonna do is go ahead and actually connect to the node SDK. So I wanna extend this a little bit. 
we're gonna quickly set up a database with a collection, add some items, and then actually request those items. So I wanna show you how to work with server-side SDKs. So if you wanna go ahead and use something that you already have set up, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna go through this real quick. We're gonna set up a new database, and that's gonna be prod for production, and that'll generate an ID for us. So we're gonna let that just automatically do that. And then for the collection, we'll just go ahead and call this profiles. So these will be profiles for users. We'll just go ahead and hit create here. And for the attributes at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and add two attributes. We'll just go ahead and add in a username and a bio. So the username and the size will be 50 characters. And then for the bio, we'll just quickly add that in as a string as well. So we'll just do bio for the size. We'll just do 500 and let's see. Okay. So before we actually add any documents, I'm just going to go ahead and go into settings. We need to make sure that we set our permissions here. So for permissions at this point, we're just going to set any and anybody can create, read, update, and delete. Okay. So once that saves, we can go ahead and just add in some documents because when we make a request, I actually want to be able to pull out some data here. So we'll just create a document and we'll call this first user Dennis Ivy. We won't add a bio in here and then we'll just add in a Jane Doe. So Jane Doe like that, that's gonna be the full username. Hit next, create. Okay, so from here, let's go back into our code base. So the first thing I wanna do is actually go ahead and install the Node SDK for AppRite. So let's go ahead and do npm install node-appRite. And that's gonna go ahead and add that to package.json. So now we see that. So once we run those build commands, AppRite will be able to install this. So we have the package. And now let's go ahead and make our imports here. So we need client and we need databases. And this is all coming from node AppRite. So node dash AppRite. And we'll go ahead and connect our client directly from the function here. So we'll create the variable client and this is gonna be equal to new client. And we also wanna set the endpoint for the client. So we'll do client and we'll do dot set endpoint. And the endpoint we can get from settings here, and we're just gonna grab this API endpoint. So we'll throw that in here. And the next thing I need to do is call client.setProject here. So this will be the project ID. And what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and set some variables here. So we'll call this project underscore ID. And we're gonna get this from our environment variable. So I'm gonna create a few of these right here. We'll set them here. And then we're gonna pull that data from those variables. So project ID is gonna be right here. So we'll configure all this in a second. Now in here, what I wanna do is go ahead and check if it's gonna be a get request. If it's a get request, then we're gonna call the database and render out those profiles. So we'll do if the request dot method, if this is equal to a get request, then we're just gonna go ahead and query the database and respond with that data. So from here, let's go ahead and set up our database. So we have the client, Underneath here, we'll just do const db is gonna be equal to new databases. We'll pass in the client from here. So now we can actually make a request to our database. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a variable called response, call await, and we can do db.listDocuments. So we'll go ahead and call that. And list documents at a minimum requires the database ID and the collection ID. So we'll do db ID, and then we'll call collection underscore ID underscore profile. So we're specifically calling the profiles ID right here. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly set these variables up. So we'll just do copy and paste, throw in DB ID, pass that in. And then before we finish that up with the environment variables, let's go ahead and do return res.json. And we're gonna call response dot documents. So we're just gonna respond with the documents in that collection. And before we make this push to our GitHub repo, let's go ahead and actually get these environment variables right here. So with this, we're just gonna go ahead and go to our project. So first thing we need is our project ID. So we're gonna grab that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paste those in here real quick. Then we're gonna grab the database ID. We'll just go back to our project and we'll go into the actual collection ID now. So profiles, we'll throw all this in here. And now I'm just gonna copy all of this and then we can go into functions, go into our node function in settings here. Let's go ahead and set up those environment variables. So these are the function level environment variables. Remember, you can have global environment variables, which can be accessed from any function or the environment variables that can only be accessed from this function. 
So let's go ahead and paste in our variables here and we'll just do a little cleanup. We'll remove const here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the quote and also make sure that there's no space in between these. So we'll take that out. Let's go ahead and remove that. And that looks better. We'll save that. And once this is added, then we can grab these environment variables from the function. So we don't have to expose our IDs here. So now we can just go ahead and do process dot env dot project ID. And then we'll copy and paste this. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this. And then we'll grab the collection ID from the environment variable and then the DB ID. Okay, so at this point, this all looks good. What I wanna do is also just make sure that we're not passing up node modules into that GitHub repo. So we'll add in a git ignore file. So dot git ignore. And inside of git ignore, we'll just go ahead and do node underscore modules forward slash save that. And let's go ahead and make a push. So we'll just do git add, git commit, and then git push dash u origin main. Okay, so that's making the push. Let's go ahead and check this out. So we'll go into our build logs here. It should be deploying once that repo is committed. Okay, so the build is complete and let's go ahead and test out this endpoint. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And there we go. So we've successfully created our own function completely from scratch and connected to the node SDK.